Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS. And in this lesson, I'm going to be talking about channel design modifications. This takes place in the geometric data editor. Right. The channel design modification tool in HECRAS allows the user to create new channel geometry and also to modify existing channel geometry. All right. What I have here on the screen is my HECRAS, and I will put a link to the description or to the web page here that describes uh, what I'm talking about in this lesson in the video description. All right, so what I have is a geometry data editor, geometric data editor screen open up down below. I have a single river. It's a single reach with three cross sections, one at every 1,000 feet. Here is the cross section data right here. If you're curious, it um, I got a cross section at river station zero, 1,000, and 2,000. Okay. So the invert is 30 feet. So we'll uh, return to this data in just a little bit. All right, say for instance, I wanted to modify this cross-section data. I ran some simulation. I wanna go ahead and make some modifications to the channel. Now we can do that by going up to the geometric data editor tools and then channel modification right here, this third option here, channel modification original. I should also point out that there's a channel design slash modification option just above it. And what I read from the user's manual is that this option here, channel design modification original, was the original option, the original way of modifying a channel. And this has been kept in HECRAS for whatever reason. Perhaps um, it's been the preferred method and they wanted to just keep it around for users who like this method. But there's also a channel design modification here. And in this lesson, we're going to be talking about the original version. So try out both types if you want, and you might uh, like the original version more anyway. All right. So let's click on that channel modification original. Now we have a dialog box that shows us the channel modifications here. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here. So what we're going to do in the rest of this video is talk about this dialog box and then how to modify the channel geometry using these tools. It's pretty quick, pretty cool. At the top here, we specify the river and the reach. And we only have one river and one reach here, so that's trivial. Over in the right here, we have a diagram of the selected river stations. Now, right here, I only have one river station selected at the moment. It's the um, upstream, it's river station 2000. So we'll leave that there selected. And then let's also select all three river stations, all three cross sections. So I'll go down to zero. Now, what I'm seeing in this diagram is an updated view of all the selected cross sections here in the range from zero up to 2000. There's also tools to rotate the view right here. So you can either type in a rotation angle or just use these uh, horizontal scroll bar to make that rotate. Also, there's this azimuth angle, which, yeah, there's a vertical scroll bar here too. So this is like looking down on the river reach section, more of a plan view. And then if I go the opposite direction, this is more of a profile view. Okay, so I'll leave it there at five and three. In the middle section here, there's this frame for set range of values. Once we set the range of cross-section values, we can specify the cut and fill operations and then apply the cuts to the selected range. That will update this table down here, which is going to be the updated, the final uh, modified channel geometry. So we're going to do an example just to kind of see how this works. It's probably easier to uh, understand how it works once we just start working around with it. So step one is select the river reach. That's river and reach that's done. Step two is to select the range for the cross sections we wanna modify. So that's uh, this range right here, I'm done with that. We're gonna modify these three cross sections, try to keep it simple. And then whatever values we put in here, we're gonna apply that same particular cut to the entire range of cross sections. That's gonna update this table down here. And then once this table is exactly as we want it, we'll click create a modified geometry. And we also have options to compute and view cut and fill areas. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we do, let me go ahead and look at my cross sections with a little bit more intent this time to kind of see what I'm working with so I can decide on what sort of changes I wanna make. All right, so I'm gonna select the river station at uh, cross section zero here, river station zero. Again, it has an invert of 30. And then if I go upstream to 1000, it has an invert of 32. So that's a 0.2% river reach slope. And then up another two, that, another 1000 feet, we have another two feet of 
increase um, on the invert. So it's a very flat river, again, 0.2%. Also judging by the cross sections, we have this side slope right here. So if we have a rise of 35 over 100 is the run, so that'd be 100 over 35, that's about one to three. So for instance, if I wanted to make it flatter, I could say like four horizontal, one vertical, or five horizontal, one vertical. That's another option. So we can modify the slope or the side bank or a few other things. Let's go back to our channel modification dialog box and then go ahead and just work our way across. So we can make three separate cuts. We'll just uh, work with the first cut here. I'm gonna say yes for this first option. Center cuts, yes or no. A Y here is to cut, is that the cut will be centered in the cross section's main channel station. So that just makes it easier. It'll be right at the center for all three cross sections at uh, this section 500. If we put no, that means the user must specify the center stationing for each cross section. So you'll see um, how that'll fill in automatically down here. Okay, next is the bottom width. Now, that was something I forgot to check. The bottom width here is 200 feet, and I believe that's the same for all three cross sections. Yes, from 400 to 600. And then the, the center would be at 500 here. Okay, let me close the cross section data again, bring this back up. So let's stick with the bottom width of 200. So we keep that the same. The invert elevation will set to 30, and this is gonna only be for the downstream most cross section. I'll talk about that in just a moment. And then the side slope is going to be, I said four to one or five to one would actually be a little bit more slope. So let's make it four and then just kind of see what that looks like when I preview the cuts. All right, the radio buttons down here are also very important. The first one is the default that says same cut to all the sections. Now that's not what I want to do because then I'd have an invert of 30 feet for all three sections. But what I want to do is select this third one here, the project cut from Make this cut at the lowest cross section, and then the river station should increase at a slope of 0 0.002 as a decimal. So that's 0.2%. That's the same slope that it was. And then when I click apply cuts, I'll see the same inverse. It'll be 30, 32, and 34. So let's go ahead and click that button just to see what happens. Apply cuts to the selected range, okay? So what I'm seeing here in the diagram is the pink lines or the magenta lines, oops, I kind of rotated the wrong way there, shows what would happen if we made those cuts. And you can see that four to one is actually almost the same thing as we currently have. Let me make it a little bit more dramatic and change it to six to one side slope and then click apply cuts. And now you can see that that side slope is now more dramatic. There's going to be more cut. Okay. Now down here in the table, we have that six to one side slope. So the number that it's looking for here is horizontal, X horizontal for every one vertical, which is uh, irrespective of units. And then we can also specify the Manning's end value here if we wanted to. If we don't specify a value, if we just leave it blank, then it will use the existing end value from before. So the 0 0.02 here, this is a 2% increase. So we're getting 30 is a calculated value right here. That's this 30. And then 1,000 feet upstream at my 1,000 foot cross section, it is 32 because that's 30 plus uh, 1,000 times 000, 000, 000, 0.002 and then 34. So for instance, if I change this to maybe 1% slope and then I click apply, I'm going to have, it's going to be uh, 40 feet and 50 feet as my invert elevations for the two upstream cross sections. Let me click that. And then boom, there we have it. We see 40 and 50, they already calculated. Now we haven't made any changes yet. This is sort of like a preview. And this intermediate table is our way to quickly and easily modify a lot of cross sections at the same time. And then we can see what the resulting calculations are in this bottom table, as well as uh, taking a look at the uh, resulting cross sections in this diagram right here. So I'm gonna put that back. Okay, something like that. All right, let me go back and change the slope. So it'll be 0 0.002 again. So all we're changing is the side slope. We're going to make it uh, less steep than before. And I'm going to click apply. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is click this compute cuts. So we haven't actually created a new geometry file yet. We'll do that. But I'm going to click compute cuts. And then I'm going to cl click this button, uh, cut and fill areas. So when I click this, 
it brings up a new dialog box that performs a number of calculations for me for cuts and fill, comparing the original geometry with this now proposed geometry of the six to one side slope. What I have in the far left column is the river station. So we have 2000, 1000, and then for each of those river stations, we have area data. So square foot, square foot, and square foot, and square foot as well. And then after that, we have some volume data, cubic yards for the, I believe this is left over bank, main channel, right over bank, and total. So area left channel, R for right over bank and total. Be kind of nice if it was uh, printed out, but I think that's what it means. Yeah, because that makes sense. It would be the total there. Okay, and also keep in mind that we're doing square feet, but then cubic yards. So if you want to do the math, you'd have to convert. But it's all English units, so that's good. Also worth mentioning is this volume data in the far four, far right four columns refers to the volume between this river station, 2000, and the next downstream river station, which in this case would be 1000. So if you multiply uh, 1925 square feet times another 1000 feet, and then divide that by 27, that's how you'd get uh, 71,296 cubic yards. Okay, yep, just had to check that. All right. That's why we have volume here and we have volume here at the 1000, but we don't have any volume data here for the zero river station because there's no length downstream of that river station because the zero river station is the downstream most sec uh, cross section in the reach. Okay, and then we have totals down below here. So we have totals as a total column for each uh, section between cross sections and same with the area. And then at the very bottom, these last three rows, we also have total data for total volume, left, main channel, uh, right, and the, um, the total, okay? So for the main channel, we didn't change anything in the main channel. It's still 200 feet wide. It's the same slope, but we do have a good amount of cut material on the side slope because we're changing the value. If I changed it to maybe four instead of six, we have much smaller numbers here. So 285,000 cubic yards. I'm going to close that. I'm going to just change this six to a four. And then I'll make that apply the cuts, compute the cuts, and then let's view the cut and fill area. Okay. 103,000 cubic yards. So much less than, what was it, 285 or something? So that's how that works. There's also a checkbox right here that says uh, fill channel. When this option is checked on, the main channel of the base cross-section data will be filled before any of the trapezoidal cuts are applied. And right, by trapezoidal cuts, I basically mean the, uh, the width at that particular invert and then these side slopes. The main channel is filled to an elevation equal to the elevation of the lower of the two main channel bank stations. So this actually doesn't, wouldn't actually have an effect because my main channel bank stations are defined at 400 and 600. But if I changed it to, I guess, I uh, believe 300 and 700, let me go ahead and do that for all three of my cross sections. So I'm just going to click cancel. We'll come back here and actually create a new geometry file and see how that works. But let me um, go back to my cross sections here. And yeah, see, I have them set to 400 and 600. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to update that. 300 and 700, apply. And then um, actually I could do this in the table data as well. I could go tables, bank stations right here. Of course, I've already made that change for two of my three cross sections, but if I had a lot more, I, I could just do it here as well. 300 and then this is 700. Okay, so click okay. Now let's go back to our tools, channel modification original. Change this to show all three. Uh, yes, center it at the center, which is 500. The width again will be 200. The invert elevation, what did I say? It was 30. And then the side slope is four and four. We're going to start at the bottommost cross section and say the zero. The slope is zero point, so 0.2 percent. Now, if I click fill channel, let me go ahead and um, make some modifications. So let's go ahead and increase the invert, for instance, to 35. And this is for the downstream most section. 
and we can even increase the slope to something like 1%. So if I click apply cut, now you see this magenta line actually increased. In fact, let's be a little bit more dramatic. Let's, let's make this 45 and then apply the cut. Yeah, so you can see here there's going to have we're going to have different data because we have filled in a lot of that main channel here and filled in almost all of the main channel at that last cross section because the slope is is much higher as well. So now I can click compute cuts and then cut and fill area. And now we have a very different situation here. Now what we have is a huge amount of fill in the main channel and we have no cut on the left and right banks. So this is sort of the opposite situation. In fact, let's try to get a situation where we have a cut in the main channel, or a fill in the main channel, but a cut on the side banks. So let's lower our invert to 35, but let's make the slope, the side slope maybe six, and then click apply. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna fill in the channel, but then cut on the side banks. This should be interesting. Apply the cuts, compute the cuts, and then let's actually see the numbers. All right, yeah, so this is what I was going for. Uh, maybe not realistic, but just kind of getting used to using this channel modification tool as a way to understand what we're de dealing with. For the main channel, we have a little bit of cut, but much more fill. So we're having a net of uh, net fill. That's for the main channel. But then for the uh, left over bank and right over bank, we have more cut. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that. Let's go ahead and save this geometry as our new channel geometry. So to do that, we're going to go up here and give it a name for the new channel geometry. I'm going to call it Lesson 15 Modification 1, and then click this button down here, Create Modified Geometry. What it does is it brings me to my main page where my project is saved, and whatever I selected or typed in for Modified Geometry, it copied over here, and that's what I want to do. I believe this is going to save as a .g02 file. So right here are my project files. I already have a geometry for .g01. Let's just go ahead and click OK to save. OK, so let me look at my files here. Yeah, so it created a .g02. That's cool. Also, uh, before I click OK, there is a cross section, um, a checkbox down here kind of hiding from me. Cut cross section until daylights once. When this is turned on, HECRAS cuts the trapezoidal side slope until it hits air the first time and then stops. But if it's not checked, um, then it will continue to cut the side slope forever. I am going to probably always keep that checked on unless I have a good reason to keep it unchecked. Okay, so I will click OK to that. All right, so what it's telling me is this is still using my original geometry. You can see up here in the project files, lesson 15. This is the .g01 file. And then if I click on cross section, I still have the same data as before. This is the original cross section data. Now, if I wanted to change it to the new geometry data, no problem, file, open geometry data. Now I can select that mod one file that I created. This is the title, .g02 is the file path, and then click okay, and then click okay. So I have my new geometry loaded up here. I can click on the cross section to confirm. And now we have a different looking cross section. I can confirm that by looking at like the inverts, for instance, definitely different. And then obviously the view of the cross section looks different as well. So that was it. That was our uh, lesson here on changing, modifying the channel geometry by going to the geometric data window, clicking on tools, and then clicking on channel modification original, and then working through the different um, options and tools within this dialog box to modify our channel in HECRAS.